Well, sorry to disappoint you, drama queens, but this isn't a um, a video of me losing the head. Um, I just kind of want to talk a bit about more about mental health. Um, you know, a lot of people are asking me to do these videos and stuff, so yeah, I kindly um, say yeah. Um, I'm in a more comfortable place in my mind at the moment. I've chilled out. Um, and the thing is, guys, it's <clears throat> my bipolar sometimes plays havoc with me. I'm up and down like a yo-yo. Um, and sometimes I find it hard to find peace in my mind because I constantly overthink all the time. And the problem I have is sometimes I create scenarios that don't exist in my head. Um, and what happens is... I'll create a lie in my own mind and I'll believe my own bullshit. And then that sets off a big overthink and, and paranoia and anxiety. Um, sometimes I've got, you know, I have every right to be to be paranoid and, and, and have anxiety sometimes because obviously the trolling has massively affected my mind. It's massively affected my mental health and my trust for people. Um... I don't trust anybody at all, apart from family and very, very few close friends. I do not trust anybody. Um, what the trolling's done, it sent me into a mental breakdown. Um, about three or four months ago, I had a mental breakdown. I couldn't take it anymore. Um, me talking about this will probably uh, shows weakness to the trolls. But to me, it shows my vulnerability and makes me more of a man. And that's what I want men, especially men, proud men. That's what I want men to understand, that it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to show weakness. Because by showing that weakness, that the thing is, the weakness comes from your own mind. You think you're being weak, but really you're being brave and you're being a real man for opening up about it. And... My trolling campaign sent me into a uh, mental breakdown. It just got too much. You've got to remember when something is constant every day, every day, like on constantly, but not just that, people sending you things, family members sending you things, you can never escape it. Um, and that's what happened. It just become too much. And I was trying to focus on my podcast at the same time to get things right with that. That was piling pressure on my head. Um, but the breakdown was awful, man. It was the way I can explain a mental breakdown is nothing mattered anymore. Um, I didn't care whether I lived or died. Um, couldn't sleep on a night. I was constantly on edge, and I was constantly creating scenarios in my head that people were coming for me. Um, you know me, listen, I'm 18 stone, I'm not scared of anybody, but I was very weak and fragile at the time of the mental breakdown, and I was scared of everything and anything. The slightest noise, the slightest knock at the door, I was on edge constantly, I couldn't sleep, and when I did sleep, it was like half asleep, because then the slightest noise would wake me back up, and I would jump, and I'd say, who's that, who's coming for me? It was my frame of mind, and it just wasn't me. I was I was a total shell of, of who I am now. Um, but anxiety has played a very big part of my whole life. Now, my anxiety, I was always struggling to, to wonder where it came from. I was always struggling. I was always saying, I was like, how, how, why have I got this? Why? Why do I feel like I can't breathe sometimes? Like, why? What's wrong with me? My lungs? Is there something wrong with my lungs? Is my chest? And I would go for tests and stuff, and it would come back there was nothing wrong at all. My anxiety started from self-worth issues. Constantly overthinking about my body and the way I looked. People are going to find this crazy. People are going to find this crazy, but... I was always overthinking of the way I looked. So, for I mean, there was times where I would plan nights out with the boys 
and I would cancel at the last minute because my jeans were too tight and I felt fat. Um, I would get spots on my face and I wouldn't go out because I felt shit. Like that is just, it's mental. And people watching this will probably totally understand what I'm saying. Um, you just create this monster in your mind that isn't really that much of a big deal. But to us and our mindset it is. And my anxiety played a massive part right throughout my life because I was always fighting to be in shape. Um, I went through food problems where I wouldn't eat certain things. You know, I would starve myself thinking that <laughs> thinking I would get in shape, starve myself. I always had an obsession with getting abs. Um, and I think for me, my peak of my anxiety will have been 2016-17 when I started getting into films. Um, and the reason being was I felt a massive pressure to look a certain way or be a certain way. Um, <clears throat> you know, more eyes, in your mind, more eyes on you, the more panic that I get because I'm thinking, fucking everyone's watching me, everyone's in your head, you're thinking everyone's expecting something, or, but no, it isn't, you're just creating that. And then I would just constantly, constantly overthink and I would be scared to fail. And, and being scared of failure also played another massive part of my life. Scared of letting people down. Scared of not living up to people's expectations. And this is the thing. We try and live up to other people's expectations of what we think they think. But really, we don't. But really we don't, we're just, we're creating a monster in our head that doesn't exist. And it was a big problem with me, especially the way I looked and I was always thinking people are judging me. Um, people are just looking at me all the time when they weren't. Like they weren't, people weren't looking at me. I was creating that monster thinking they were. Um, sometimes I wouldn't leave the house. The thing is with me, right? Especially when I was a bare knuckle fighter, I would always try. I would always try and live up to other people's expectations of me. So in my head, I would think to myself, right? People think I'm a tough guy. People think I'm this big, strong fighting man. So I have to look like a big, strong fighting man. So then I would put myself under pressure and go and work my ass off in the gym, and also start eating really healthy. And to be honest with you, the way I was acting and the way I was doing things, like my training and my diet, it wasn't to satisfy me. It was to satisfy other people's opinions of me. So really, I wasn't trying to get in shape or be the best version of me for me. I was doing it thinking other people didn't think much of me. If you get what I'm saying. So all, most of my life, that's what I did. I was always battling to look a certain way, what I thought other people thought I had to look like. But really, I was trying to live up to other people's expectations when I should have just been trying to be the best version of me for me. And that's kind of a route that I go down now. I don't worry about having abs and I don't worry about looking a certain way. I now just go to the gym for fun. Like I go to enjoy it because I really love it. I love going to the gym, I love training hard. Um, for me, going to the gym isn't about luck, it's about my mind. So if I'm happy in the mind, then I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying my training. Uh, it's just that worry. I mean, the thing is with me as well, I also fear life. Now, people are going to think, 18 stone, bare knuckle fighter, scared of life. What I mean by that, sometimes I would, I would feel like I've not achieved enough in my life and I could die any time. So I would create an anxiety in my head that, like I would start worrying and panicking that, oh fuck, I've not, I've not done my family proud, I've not really done anything with my life, and what if I die tomorrow? So what that would do is it would automatically send, force me, I'd be forcing myself into doing things to try and impress people that I think I'm letting down. But again, that is a seed you're planting yourself. You're not letting anybody down. You think you are, but that's what you're creating yourself. And I would force myself into doing things, thinking that if I do this, I'll make them proud. 
people are going to think this is very confusing, but a lot of people will get what I'm saying. People will get what I'm saying. Self-worth issues, the fear of life, just feeling like you're letting everybody down and you're not living up to other people's expectations. All that comes from our mindset and it all comes from fear. Anxiety is just fear. For example, when I used to have panic attacks, uh, it got that bad. When I had a panic attack, sometimes I'd run out in the middle of the road worried that I was going to die. Yeah. I'd be having a panic attack in the house and I can't breathe. I can't get that breath. I'm, I'm trying to get that breath. And I'd run out in the middle of the road. People think I'm fucking crazy. I'd be running out in the middle of the road thinking I'm going to die. When you have the worst panic attack possible, people get this, you do actually think you're going to die. And because you think that, it actually escalates the panic attack. And now, the way I deal with it now, if I do feel it coming on, because yeah, listen, I still get it, man. Still get it. I'm not perfect. Still got a lot of work to do on myself. But now what I do is, Instead of going into panic mode, I'll shut my eyes and think of happy thoughts and I'll think of something nice. Just close my eyes and take myself into a nice happy place. Um, but a lot of my anxiety, especially recently, has came from recent events and worry. Um, and I think I speak about the trolling because it was a, it's been a big part of my life for the last two years. So I cannot speak about it, I have to, because it's affected me, it's damaged me, mentally damaged me in the fact that I had to get put back on medication. I had to go and see a psychiatrist, had to see a mental health team, because I would wake up panicking what was gonna get posted next. Where now I'm more like chilled about it. Because in my own mind now I know it's all bullshit. But it was it got to a stage where, when it, especially when it first started, I was waking up and there was videos and stuff getting posted online. And I couldn't sleep on a night. I was fucking worrying what was going up next. What are they going to post? What intimate videos have they got? What, what voice notes have they got? What, who's handed what in? constantly overthinking massively all the time it fucking sent me sideways man it me and you know what this trolling over the last two years has changed me as a person not in a good way either it's made me very very wary of people and angry towards people it's made me not want to make new friends it stopped me dating I didn't trust anybody. It ruined my life to the extent I become a recluse. My address was being posted online, my, where my old place was being posted online. My phone number used to get posted online. Someone, you know, who that knew me gave them the, the number. And I just wouldn't trust anybody. I'm thinking, what the fuck? People are giving these people my number. Constantly having to change my number all the time. And then worrying about them giving me a dress out. You know, who the fuck's going to come to my house? Like, not that I'm bothered about that. But it's like the anxiety of everyone knowing where you live when you want to live a private life. And it's just so easy to fucking find. But then my address, pictures being taken of where I live, being posted online as well. That added to the anxiety. So the last two years has been probably the best and worst. The worst in what we've been through, me and the family, but then the best, and it's been a massive learning curve to the fact that nothing now could ever break me. Nothing could ever break me because it's made me that mentally tough that nothing, and I mean nothing, could break me. I've weathered the storm and I've learned to dance in the rain. And now I feel like I'm starting to see the rainbow. And I feel sometimes in life, you have to go through the storms to get to the rainbow. And I think that's what I've done. 
And like I said in, in my other video, I, you know, I've had stones chucked at me and I've had my name dragged through the mud. But what I've done is instead of fighting and, and, and letting it destroy me, I've picked up the stones, I've dragged the stones through the mud, and I've started to build my empire, hence the podcast. And that's what I've done. The podcast has given me vision and focus. Yeah, I go off track now and again, but that's just because of my mental health. I mean, I'm not perfect, and I have outbursts, and it's obviously probably part of the process of me growing as a person. Um, I've made mistakes, you know, I'm, I, 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 I shouldn't, shouldn't come online. I shouldn't make videos when I'm in that mindset of being angry. And that's a mistake, and that's something I'm gonna learn from. It's these little mistakes that I do now are gonna benefit me in the future because I won't do it again. Do you know what I mean? And now and again, yeah, I'll say this will be my last video, but then I'll do it again. <clears throat> and that's, for me, part of my growth. And that's what it's doing, it's making me learn. I'm learning from these little mistakes that I'm making. And for me to be te for me to be taken extremely seriously as a podcaster, I need to kind of grow up a little bit. And I, what I mean by that is by stop reacting to, to people that you don't even know. Because the thing is with YouTube, everybody has an opinion. And it's a freedom of speech world. Everyone's entitled to say what they want. Yeah, some people say a lot of really nasty things. A lot of people hide behind fake profiles. But me as a man and as a podcaster, I need to learn to ignore that and just keep focused on the good things that are happening by interviewing people and focusing on the good. Not focusing on comments or the bad things. But yeah, I'm guilty of that because, you know... I gotta remember I've only I've only been in the game for nearly a year now, so it's not like I'm fucking a fully fledged podcast. I'm just learning and I'm I'm getting I'm teaching, I'm learning new things along the way. But all this for me, it's I now see this as a blessing because it's helping me grow as a person mentally, but also intelligently by not doing this and not doing that and not reacting to this and and it's all a learning curve this is what i mean it, i'm not i don't regret anything that i've said or any of the videos or other other times i've went off my head i don't regret that i'm learning from it and i'm taking it on board not to behave that way so yeah i would say that i need to do i do i do need to grow up a little bit in the fact that if you want to be taken seriously as a podcaster You've got to ignore it. Because if you can't, I'm in the wrong game. It's as simple as that. But I'm fully aware of my actions. Oh, I'm not going to, because I'm bipolar, I can't remember doing that. Listen, I remember everything I do. I react in very erratic ways. I can be very, very erratic and do crazy shit. And also, and also be very spontaneous. But when I get erratic, I'll stupidly put the camera on and do a video and post it on YouTube and I shouldn't. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's one thing that I am going to learn from because if I do get in that mindset, because I do, and listen, the, the, the trolling affected me, man, massively. It's left me traumatised in the fact that it's hard to get away from. Because when, you, when you're on YouTube... I mean, I don't really bother with Facebook at the minute much now because it's more like focusing on YouTube... You know, because I'm because you know everyone's got their own. Like you subscribe to certain channels, and because of the algorithms, certain content pops up on my news feed, and I see it. And I, I do try and avoid seeing things, but sometimes you just can't. It's there in your face, and that can affect me. Like, oh, he's made a video. I need to go and make one, but I don't. Success kills. And silence is the best recipe. So all these people can chat about me. But all I need to do is keep my mouth zip. And get on with business and podcast. And that's it. I know the people, these people won't go away. You know, they spend, they spend their lives uh, targeting me. But 
what I can do is I can learn to blank that out and focus on the good things because those that know me best know what type of man I am. They know what I'm like, they know who I am. So, yeah, I do definitely need to grow up a little bit in the fact that if I want to be a top podcaster and I want to grow and get better, I've got to switch off from the bullshit. And listen, I do not disagree with any of you guys in the comments. One thing I feel blessed with is I have a load of people supporting this podcast that talk absolute sense. And I am open to constructive criticism. I am. I am. I'm open to constructive criticism. Um, and I'm happy. I mean, listen, I take a lot of advice on board from especially you guys that watch me. I take advice because you are actually watching from outside the box. So you can kind of see things better than me. So I do. And people say, oh, Decker, you shouldn't read the comments. People say, oh, Joe Rogan doesn't. Man, fucking hell, I'm not Joe Rogan. Do you know what I mean? He's like the, one of the best in the world. The reason why I read the comments is because I feel that giving something back to the people that support the channel costs nothing to be nice. And it takes no time to reply to somebody. I get a lot of people complaining at me. Oh, Decker, you don't, you don't write back to me. I'm falling out with you. Now. I've, I've unfollowed you because you haven't written back. They're the type of people I don't want supporting me because I get unindated with emails, messages on Messenger. I get unindated and I try to reply back to as many as I can. Some people will tell you, especially on the on the comments list on here, people have emailed me and I have responded back. And I do try my best because for me, for those that are supporting me, that's, you know... I'm given back by fucking interacting. I, I want to interact with the supporters because I don't want to be one of these people that have a podcast show and just think about myself and forget about all you guys because it's you guys that make the podcast. Like, a lot of these podcasters don't realise, man, it's all about them. No, it isn't. We are a small part of this, the big picture is the supporters and the followers of the people that watch and push the algorithms of the content. If it wasn't for you lot, you wouldn't have a podcast show. Because how can you have a podcast show when nobody's watching it? The supporters and the followers are the most important part of the whole podcast thing. That's my opinion. But yeah, I, I think that. I honestly think that. And like I say, the podcast has become my therapy. It's taken away the anxieties. Yeah, it gets stressful. But what I am learning to do now is I'm learning to switch off my personal life with business. So when I podcast, and I hear this such a, like a sad story or a crazy story or a violent story, when I've finished, I don't take that home with me. It stays in the office. And, you know... I can proudly say, I think I've probably changed the whole dimension of live, live stream interviews before I got into the podcast game. I know there was people doing it, but uh, me and Axel, we added that kind of documentary style narration to the, to the podcast show. And like I say, the podcast gives me therapy. It's When I'm sitting in this little room, and this is where I do my interviews from, when I'm sitting here, I'm not, I've got no anxiety or no worries. This is my little comfort zone. I'm in my comfort now. I'm in the zone now. I'm taking, talking to the guest. We're speaking. We're connecting. I have no other things on my mind. But I just wish that I could take that moment there where it's me and the guest and I'm totally focused on the guest. I wish I could take my feeling and thought out of this office and into my personal life because to me then I would find peace in myself people say oh, why, why, why have you not found peace in yourself Decker I've not found peace in myself because I'm not totally content and happy in my life it doesn't matter how much money you have or any materialistic things in the world contentment and happiness is the key 
to living a good life. And I haven't found contentment. Now, this podcast, I love doing it. Listen, like I say, it's my therapy. It takes me away from all the all the, the, the badness in my head. It takes me away from the black dog. But doesn't make me completely happy. And it's sad to say this, but apart from being with my family, in my family's company and enjoying family time and stuff, nothing in my life can make me happy. And it's quite a bit sad that, but you know what? I'm not seeing it as a, as, as a sad, negative thing. I'm seeing it as a little goal I can set myself to actually find that contentment and happiness. So instead of think, dwelling on it and thinking, oh, I'm never going to find anything to make me happy. I don't. It drives me on. It's driving me on because I do know at some point that flick in my head will just switch and I've done it. I'll, I'll have done it. And that's all like laws of attraction, positivity, believe and it will come true. And that's what I'm doing. I'm fucking pushing it out there. I'm trying my best. And like I say, I'm not just trying to improve the podcast, but I'm trying to improve as a person as well. I'm trying to improve as a guest, as a host, interviewing people. You know, I've still, I've still made mistakes. I've still got faults as a, as a guest, as a, as a host, because I'm not perfect. I'm not like, I'm not a fully fledged fucking experienced podcaster, am I? I've only just got into it. So I'm seeing this podcast as a whole learning curve in my whole life because I'm trying to use not just the podcast, but to have a full domino effect in my life. So if the podcast's going really well, hopefully everything else will take place in my life and it'll go well. So, you know, hopefully becoming happy doing the interviews and hopefully finding that contentment can then have a domino effect in the rest of my life. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I just thought I would do this little video, chat and shit. I know, something different, not a rant. I'm, you know, I'm learning from that now not to do that. Not to react, give them what they want. I just thought I'd do this for you guys. You know, a few people have been asking me to start doing things like this, meaningful videos and just talking about my anxieties and mental health and little things like that and that's what I've done so listen guys thank you so much for following me and and watching the show and um I'll promise you I'll do the best I can I'll, I'll I'll give you the best I can and I'll always make the shows entertaining and like I said I like to have a bit of banter when I'm on the camera and stuff and you know it's not all serious do you know what I mean I just try and be different I'm not I'm not trying to compete or copy anybody I'm just trying to be myself and do the best I can um, but yeah, thank you guys and God bless.